Well, it is a brisk spring morning. I've got the wife in here with me. She bought me a kayak yesterday. So I've upgraded or downgraded, however you see it, uh, from a sea stream 12 foot open water to a Pelican Catch Classic Catch 100. So you'll get to see that. Uh, trying to get off, fix and get breakfast. I've, I've promised my wife that um, I won't show her in the video. She don't like being seen in the videos. Uh, so like with the last video, you know, where you only saw her fingertips, um, you may see the tip of her head or tip of her kayak or maybe tip of her uh, shoulder. But I promised her that all I'd use is the tip and just the tip. <laughs> I'm such a, I'm such a teenager. <laughs> Look at this, isn't she gorgeous? This is my new Pelican Kayak. It's right here is the classic Catch 100. So got a good seat, got a nice big well, two um, areas for your rods got area I can do my mounts for my uh, action camera storage under seat plenty of foot room and then got handles everywhere and then we got the hatch which this is the hatch in here so this is awesome I'll probably make that into a dry hatch and I'll need to put some bungee cords because they don't come with bungee cords but if you have something that you need to clip to, it does have this little runner thing. So that's kind of neat. Um, so yeah, um, that, that kind of stores your, your um, paddle as well. You got one on each side. Didn't have my camera on, but I have been missing fish all day. Just not getting the bite for whatever reason. But this little bass right here got it. Neat. There we go. Pretty little bass. I think what I love about this my um, bass that I just caught, which it's in that that bag right there, because I'm going to take him home and eat him. Uh, that bass was caught just about 15 yards over that way, and the bay is right here. So this is the part about Florida that most people don't understand, is that you can catch a lot of freshwater fish and saltwater fish in the same areas. We have brackish waters and so a lot of our fish are exposed to salt water and they prey upon salt water, the freshwater fish prey upon saltwater fish or what people would think is saltwater fish. And right now I am in probably about a foot to half foot of water. So if I wasn't in the kayak, there's no way I could be here right now. And no telling if a redfish or a flounder or something like that would pop up. So I'm going to keep fishing and see what we can get. I don't know if the, the camera's going to pick this up, but I've got a minnow, but well it's a Berkeley power bait, and I am in the middle of a bunch of stingrays out in the bay. So try not to get one of them to eat my power bait, but they're coming around and these are some pretty good ones. I almost want to catch one. Take it home and eat it. 
neat to see these creatures. Don't know if you can see it or not, but there is another stingray right here. I am surrounded by them. There's another one coming up right here. He's looking at my worm that I got in the water. Hopefully he won't bite it. If he does, well, I don't have any issue. But yeah, they're all just around. Oh, I just had another little fish swim by. Hey. See what we did. Something to consider when you're kayaking. We got probably about 10, maybe 15 mile per hour winds, one and a half foot waves right now. So if you go a little deeper into a bay or area where there is a shallow bank and you go deeper you will sometimes not be banged around as much as if you follow the bank or the shoreline so what we've done is gone out a few hundred yards out away from where we want to come in at so that these waves are a lot less the the power behind them is a little less and then we're going to probably make about a, a 45 degree turn in a moment and start heading into shore and by doing that we won't be beat up and banged up as much and not exert as much energy so a little trick there he had or not hawk and eagle bald eagle and he has been flying around and it is freaking awesome. He flew overhead. I was having problems getting my camera started. I don't know if you can see it yet or not, but there's a gator in front of get a little closer to him. Not trying to harass him. Staying a healthy distance away. That is so freaking. It's probably about a six footer, small one. That could do some damage. I'm doing this little inlet. I'm going to let him go on. He's going away from us, so I don't want to pressure him. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go in this little inlet, and then we're probably going to turn around. <coughs> I've only caught one bass, had some small fish to take my bait under. Fish hitting all over the place, but they're stupid for some reason. Florida, our largemouth start uh, spawning around March. So by the end of April, all the bass have spawned out in Northwest Florida. That's now, if you're not from Florida, you're probably saying, "What? Her fish nowhere near March. It's maybe April, probably May, June, something like that, depending upon where you live." And that's because our waters are warmer than everybody else's. And also we have a different type of bass. Ours is a true largemouth bass, not what they refer to as a northern largemouth. 
uh, that's some new science came out with DNA testing. Found 19 species of black bass. At any rate, we have bass that they live in brackish water. They're largemouth, but they live in brackish water. They will always be smaller than a freshwater bass. They will always be slightly more aggressive than a freshwater largemouth. And developmentally, they tend to be more, for lack of a better word, retarded. And I don't mean this in a, a negative way. I mean this in a true meaning of the word. It is slowed. But I really didn't know how slow this development was. Had it been April, I would have kept, I would not have kept that bass. Because the spawn is over really in most of Northwest Florida. There is not much left of the bass spawn. This is May. However, when I caught that bass, it was May. And, well, I took it home because I believe in catching, you know, fillet and release. I figured the bass wasn't on bed anymore. It wasn't protecting the young anymore. It looked beat up. I was like, well, just got out of the spawn. Go ahead and eat it. It's done its duty. As I was filleting out the bass, I always I always do what my what my mother referred to as an autopsy. I look at the fish for state of health. I look at the stomach contents. I look at a number of things. And when I looked at the um, the gut area, I noticed something yellow peeking at me. It was a female, and she had roe still. So in May, now if you don't know anything about roe, there you can look at the eggs in the row and tell how far along she was. It starts out as just being almost kind of like a jelly or custard and then it goes to what I call fine grit or masa. Um, if you know anything about Spanish cooking, masa is a type of uh, cornmeal that is finer than cornmeal. And then it goes to cornmeal stage and then it goes to a grit stage, and then what I call a BB stage. And it's not the size of BBs, but the eggs become very pronounced. There's a lot of fluid in around the, the eggs. The eggs are firm. They're not soft and easy to bust. Um, and that's when they're about to row. That's when they're about to the spawn. This bass was in the early stages of row development. She is in what I call the soft gr or small grit stage, that masa. So if you ever if you ever looked at a grain between a flour grain and a grain of cornmeal, somewhere between that, that that is masa. It's it's a real fine grit cornmeal. And so that let me know that she probably wouldn't be rowing until about June. Now I've done some research and I have yet to find where bass row more than once or spawn more than once. Now a, a bass, especially a female bass, can spawn two or three times with different males. So she can go to one bed, spawn, find another male, spawn with him, find another male, spawn with him, and then the male's duty is protect the eggs and keep the baby safe. And so that is nature's way of making sure that the genes are spread out. So that is pretty common for a female bass to spawn with more than one male bass and lay her eggs in more than one place. But it is highly unusual to see a bass that probably will be spawning in June, which means that these brackish water bass, and I'm 
46 years old now, that these brackish water bass, they're spawning at a totally different time. They're not spawning with all the other bass that are freshwater. That their developmental growth is so slowed that what would normally be a three or four pound bass was maybe a pound and a half and that she is going to be good grief three months behind her peers that are freshwater bass so i just thought i would share that before we go on to this cooking section here uh, just it bothered me that i took one that hadn't rode yet but the information i gained you owe it to yourself to basically look at the animals and study them and understand their health, their state of development, their state of being. Don't just take them and clean them and cook them and that's it. Try to learn from them. They, they gave up their life. Try to gain as much as you can from them. And this female bass taught me a lot. So if you're in a brackish water condition and it's June, be looking for some bass beds you may find them they'll be smaller bass but they're going to be aggressive and evidently they spawn around june who knew for our north florida dill slaw first thing we're going to do is take 10 ounces of cut up cabbage and put it in the bowl there go. now we're going to put five ounces of dill pickle relish. Now, if you want more dill, you can always add more dill. I may actually add more dill than the five ounces, but we're gonna try this first. Because the economy has gotten so out of hand, blue plate mayonnaise has went through the roof. So I'm trying this new food club brand. I've I've always used Blue Plate, but lately I've been doing Food Club and it tastes the closest to Blue Plate I can find. And it is roughly a third of the cost. So for that, we're gonna probably put in about a cup to start off with. There we are. Now we'll stir it up. Okay. I'm not really happy with this. I'm gonna go ahead and use the rest of dill pickles. All right, so now I'm going to do a taste test. That's on the money. If for some reason you get a brand of pickles and there's like an off taste, sometimes I'll add some chemicals in there that don't work well with cabbage. You can put a teaspoon of celery seed in there and it will soak up the off taste and you won't taste the celery seed at all so that is a little trick to use but this is a good brand of pickles so now we're going to cover this up and let's sit for about an hour or two before we start our fish fry now we're going to need some um, potatoes cut up into french fries Okay, that is roughly six medium, small to medium russet potatoes right there. Okay, so now what we're going to need is half a pepper, half an onion, and half a 14.75 ounce, 418 grams um, can of sweetened condensed, or sweet, sweet cream style corn. Okay, I actually said half a red bell pepper, but I'm using a quarter red bell pepper. Uh, the rest of that went to the freezer for another dish that I'll be fixing when I do a lure build and catch, clean, and cook of one of Florida's most detest detested native fish. So stay tuned for that upcoming episode. Now we're going to put in about a cup of yellow cornmeal. Okay, now we're going to add in about a half cup of self-rising flour. Okay, now we're going to add in one egg. This egg actually came from my father-in-law. 
Okay, now we stir. Okay, now what we'll do is let this sit to the side and we'll um, let it just kind of thicken. And from there, time for us to do our batter for the fish and then we do the grits. I always like to batter my fish in a gallon Ziploc bag only because paper sacks are hard to find these days. But if you can find a paper sack, it's better. Okay, so that is one and a half cups of yellow cornmeal. To that, I'm adding a good amount of salt. Okay, so that's about a tablespoon. Now we're going to add a good bit, probably closer to a half tablespoon of peppercorn medley grinder which I've said this before it's white peppercorns, pink peppercorns, coriander, um, green peppercorns, allspice, coriander, just a bunch of good stuff. Okay so now we're going to shake this up and batter our fish. I will state that I always soak my fish in salt water and change out the salt water uh, at least once in um, at least a four hour period time. Uh, so this is the bass fillets and there's a um, some jackfish or chain pickerel that I'm going to be battering after this uh, from a previous fishing trip I did with Ricky Wallace. So I've got two different types of fish so I'm, I'm trying to keep them separate. Okay so this is the bass and this is the jackfish or chain pickerel to this pot i've added a quart or sorry not a quart a pint of water we're going to season this well with some salt about two tablespoons of butter and this is a cup of grits added in now we're going to stir this up constantly let it cook for about five to ten minutes and then we'll start adding in the other seasonings. Now we'll add in another pint of water. Now we're going to add in one more cup of water. Now a lot of people might ask how long I took or whatever. It's not even been five minutes me boiling this water and people would ask why did you do the water in three separate orders? The reason for that, I feel that it doesn't lump as bad. I think that starting off with cold water and building up actually builds up the starch to make it creamier. And I think you get a more flavorful, tender grit by doing it this way. But everybody has a different you know, feeling on grits. Okay, I've changed burners and have the grits simmering away. On another burner, I have my pot with my fish oil. I always keep my fish oil separate from my regular oil while I'm reusing my oil. And I'm waiting for all those little strings to go away and start to shimmer. Um, that's how you know the oil is hot enough. Another little trick you can do is put a toothpick in there. If it starts bubbling up, you know it's ready. First we'll do the bass fillets. Once the fish begin to float, you can uh, then take a, a wire spider or a slotted spoon and then uh, drain them off, drain the grease off of them and put them on a tray lined with um, paper towels. Now this is fully thickened up and time to add in a, um, a half package of cream cheese. So cream cheese packet, just in case you want to know, is 8 ounces, so I'm adding in 4 ounces of cream cheese. Now it's time to drop in spoonfuls of the Hush Pit Puppy mixture. Use a spoon or metal chopstick or whatever device you have to fl keep flipping these over so that they evenly cook on all sides. That's the trick with Hush Puppies, you got to keep them rolling. Now that's all creamy good. I'm going to add some Colby Jack cheese already shredded. Um, so it's probably going to be, I'd say maybe a cup and a half, two cups. Eyeballing it to what I like. Alright, so these are a good golden brown color. 
it's hard to say how to best tell if a hush puppy is done or not because they float immediately so if you're in doubt break one open and just check them but these right here have cooked long enough at a low enough temperature and they're a good golden brown I'm gonna say they're done. Speaking of done the grits are done. It's tater time they're frying away once they float up and get golden brown I'll take them out and salt them uh, Tasha's already said that the hush puppies and the um, coleslaw are divine. So there you go with that. And here we go. These are cheese grits, the coleslaw, jackfish, or chain pickle, bass, some hush puppies, and french fries. With that, I'm going to go eat with my wife. I appreciate you for watching. See you again next time. Bye.